Good morning. Good Thursday morning. This is Kent Blaylock with SDG Bible Study. That's the Soli Deo Gloria Bible Study coming to you on this 27th day of April, 2023. And we are going to continue in our reading of God's Word chronologically from the One Year Chronological Bible. This morning we will be reading from Selected Readings in 2 Samuel and 1 Chronicles. So join me as we read together this morning. Second Samuel chapter 12 verses 26 through 31. Now Joab fought against Reba of the Ammonites and took the royal city. And Joab sent messengers to David and said, I have fought against Reba. Moreover, I have taken the city of waters. Now then gather the rest of the people together and encamp against the city and take it, lest I take the city and it be called by my name. So David gathered all the people together and went to Reba and fought against it and took it. And he took the crown of their king from his head. The weight of it was a talent of gold, and in it was a precious stone. And it was placed on David's head, and he brought out the spoil of the city, a very great amount. And he brought out the people who were in it, and set them in labor with saws and iron picks and iron axes, and made them toll at the brick kilns. And, the, and thus he did to all the cities of the Ammonites. Then David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. First Chronicles chapter 20, verses 2 and 3. And David took the crown of the, their king from his head, and he, he found that it weighed a talent of gold, and in it was a precious stone. And it was placed on David's head, and he brought out the spoil of the city a very great amount. And he brought out the people who were in it, and set them to labor with saws and iron picks and axes. And thus David did to all the cities of the Ammonites. Then David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. Second Samuel 13, chapter 13. Now Absalom, David's son, had a beautiful, beautiful sister whose name was Tamar. And after a time, Amnon, David's son, loved her. And Amnon was so tormented that he made himself ill because of his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and it seemed impossible to Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Donad Jonadab, the son of Shemaiah, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very crafty man. And he said to him, O son of the king, why are you so haggard morning after morning? Will you not tell me? Amnon said to him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Jonadab said to him, Lie down on your bed and pretend to be ill. And when your father comes to see you, say to him, Let my sister Tamar come and give me bread to eat, and prepare the food in my sight, that I may see it and eat it from her hand. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be ill. And when the king came to see him, Amnon said to the king, Please let my sister Tamar come and make a couple of cakes in my sight that I may eat from her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go to your brother Amnon's house and, pre and prepare food for him. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, where he was lying down. And she took dough and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight and baked the cakes. And she took the pan and emptied it out before him, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, said, Send out everyone from me. So, so everyone went out from him. Then T Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the food into the chamber, chamber that I may eat from your hand. And Tamar took the cakes she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother. But when, but when she brought them ne near to him to eat, he took hold of her and said to her, Come, lie with me, my sister. She answered him, No, my brother, do not violate me, for such a thing is not done in Israel. Do not do this outrageous thing. As for me, where, where could I carry my shame? And as for you, you would be as one of the outrageous fools in Israel. Now, therefore, please speak to the king, for he will not withhold me from you. But he would not listen to her, and being stronger than she, 
he violated her and lay with her. Then Amnon hated her with a very great hatred, so that the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. And Amnon said to her, Get up, go. But she said to him, No, my brother, for this wrong in sending me away is greater than the other that you did to me. But he would not listen to her. He called the young man who served him and said, Put this woman out of my presence and bolt the door after her. Now, now she was wearing a long robe with sleeves, for thus were the virgin daughters of the king dress. So his servant put her out and bolted the door after her. And Tamar put ashes on her head and tore the long robe that she wore. And she laid her hand on her head and went away, crying aloud as she went. And her brother Absalom said to her, Has Amnon your brother been with you? Now hold your peace, my sister. He is your brother. Do not take this to heart. So Tamar lived, a desolate woman, in her brother Absalom's house. When King David heard of all these things, he was very angry. But Absalom spoke to Amnon, neither good nor bad, for, for, for Absalom hated Amnon because he had violated his sister Tamar. After two full years, Absalom had sheep shears at Baal Hazor, which is near Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons. And Absalom came to the king, came to the king and said, Behold, your servants, your servant has sheep shears. Please let the king and his servants go with your servant. But the king said to Absalom, No, my son, let us not all go, lest we be burdensome to you. He pressed him, but he would no, not go go but gave him his blessing then Absalom said if not please let my brother Amnon go with with us and the king said to him why should he go with you but Absalom pressed him until he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him then Absalom commanded his servants mark when Amnon's heart is merry with wine and when I say to you strike Amnon then kill him do not fear have I not commanded you be courageous and be valiant. So the servants of Absalom did to Amnon, as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and each mounted his mule, and fled. While they were on the way, way, news came to David. Absalom has struck down all the king's sons, and not one of them is left. Then the king arose, and tore his garments, and lay on the earth, and all his servants who were standing by tore their garments. But Jonadab, the son of Shemaiah, David's brother, said, Let not my lord suppose that they have killed all the young men, the king's sons, for Amnon alone is dead. For by the command of Absalom, this has been determined from the day he violated his sister Tamar. Now therefore let not my lord the king so take it to heart as to suppose that all the king's sons are dead, for Amnon alone is dead. But Absalom fled, and the young man who kept the watch lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, many people were coming from the road behind him by the side of the mountain. And Jonadab said to the king, Behold, the king's sons have come, as your servant said, so it has come about. And as soon as he had finished speaking, behold, the king's sons came and lifted up their voice and wept, and the king also and all his servants wept very bitterly. But Absalom fled and went to Talmai, the son of Amihud, king of Geshur. And David mourned for his son day after day. So Absalom fled and went to Geshur and was there three years. And the spirit of the king longed to go out to Absalom because he was comforted about Amnon since he was dead. Second Samuel chapter 14. Now Joab, the son of Uriah, knew that the king's heart went out to Absalom. And Joab sent to Tekoa and brought, him, and brought from there a wise woman and said to her, Pretend to be a mourner and put on mourning garments. Do not anoint yourself with oil, but behave like a woman who has been mourning many days for the dead. Go to the king and speak thus to him. So Joab put the words in her mouth. When the woman of Tekoa came to the king, she fell on her face to the ground and paid homage and said, Save me, O king. And the king answered, and the king said to her, What is your trouble? She answered, 
Alas, I am a widow, my husband is dead. And your servant had two sons, and they quarreled with one another in the field. There was no one to separate them, and one struck the other and killed him. And now the whole clan has risen against your servant, and they say, Give up the man who struck his brother, that we may put him to death for the life of his brother whom he killed. And so they would destroy the heir also. Thus they would quench my coal that, that is left and leave to my husband neither name nor rem, remnant on the face of the earth. Then the king said to the woman, Go to your house, and I will give orders concerning you. And the woman of Tekoa said to the king, Oh, on me be the guilt, my lord the king, and on my father's house let the king and his throne be guiltless. The king said, If anyone says anything to you, bring him to me, and he shall never touch you again. Then she said, Please let the king invoke the Lord your God, that the avenger of blood kill no more, and my son be not destroyed. He said, As the Lord lives, not one hair of your son shall fall to the ground. Then the woman said, Please let your servant speak a word to my lord the king. He said, Speak. And the woman said, Why then have you planned such a thing against the people of God? For in giving this decision, the king convicts himself, inasmuch as the king does not bring his banished one home again. We must all die. We are like water spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. But God will not take away life, and he devises means so that so God will not take away life, and he devises means so that the banished one will not remain an outcast. Now I have come to say this to my lord the king, because the people have made me afraid, and your servant thought, I will speak to the king. It may be that the king will perform the, the request of his servant. For the king will hear and deliver his servant from the hand of the men who would destroy me and my son together from the heritage of God. And your servant thought, the word of my lord the king will set me at rest, for my lord the king is like the angel of God to discern good and evil. The Lord your God be with you. Then the king answered the woman, Do not hide from me anything I ask you. And the woman said, Let my lord the king speak. The king said, Is the hand of Joab with you in all this? The woman answered and said, As surely as you live, my lord the king, one cannot turn to the right hand or to the left from anything that my lord the king has said. It was your servant Joab who commanded me. It was he who put all these words in the mouth of your servant. In order to change the course of things, your servant Joab did this. But my lord has wisdom like the wisdom of the angel of God to know all things that are on the earth. Then the king said to Joab, Behold, now I grant this, go bring back the young man Absalom. And Joab fell on his face to the ground and paid homage and blessed the king. And Joab said, Today your servant knows that I have found favor in your sight, my lord the king, and that the king has granted the, the request of his servant. So Joab arose and went to Geshur and brought Absalom to Jerusalem. And the king said, Let him dwell apart in his own house. He is not to come into my presence. So Absalom lived apart in his own house and did not come into the king's presence. Now in all Israel there was no no one so much to be praised for his handsome appearance as Absalom. From the sole of his foot to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. And when he cut the hair of his head, for at the end of every year he used to cut it, when it was heavy on him, he cut it. He weighed the hair of his head two hundred shekels by the king's weight. Then were born to Absalom three sons and one daughter, whose name was Tamar. She was a beautiful woman. So Absalom lived two full years in Jerusalem without coming into the king's presence. Then Absalom sent for Joab to send to him the king, but Joab would not come to him. And he sent a second time, but Joab would not come. Then he said to his servants, See, Joab's field is next to mine, and he has barley there. Go and set it on fire. So Absalom's servants set the field on fire. Then Joab arose and went to Absalom at his house and said to him, why have your servants set my field on fire? Absalom answered Joab, Behold, I sent word to you, come here, that I might send you to the king to ask 
Why have I come from Geshur? It would be better for me to be there still. Now, therefore, let me go into the presence of the king. And if there is guilt in me, let him put me to death. Then Joab went to the king and told him, and he summoned Absalom. So he came to the king and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king. And the king kissed Absalom. And that's going to conclude our reading from God's word this morning. As we're reading of Absalom and Tamar and God's dealing with that. Amnon, uh, his sin, uh, the vengeance that Absalom took upon Amnon, him being banished from the king and now being brought back. Hope you enjoyed the reading this morning. Hope you will have a blessed day today and give all the God, God the glory, all the glory to God. Have a blessed day. Soli Deo Gloria.